Welcome to Intermediate Algebra, Unit 2, Lesson 3, Solving Literal Equations. When you hear the word literal, think letters. These are equations with letters in them, more than one, more than one variable. And solving them means to rearrange them so a different variable is isolated. So after we finish this, we should be able to rearrange these equations or formulas that contain multiple variables to solve it for a different variable. Usually it would be the variable we, we would need to find given the other information. So when we work with formulas, usually the equation has one variable on one side and how to calculate it on the other. The example I use here is area equals length times width. This works great if you have a length and a width and you need to calculate the area. But sometimes instead you have area in length but need to calculate the width. Now you could plug in the area for A and the length for L and solve for W but if you had to do that a lot of times, it would be easier to do it once using the literal form of the equation. And then you have a formula that's actually solving for W. So that's literal equation is a process that uses algebra to rearrange the equation to solve for a different variable. It's no different than what you were doing in the last two lessons. It's just you keep the letters in place. You don't have numbers to work with. But how you know what to do is the same process as you did when you just have one variable in the equation. So here's our example of area again. Area equals length times width. So what if we needed to solve this for width instead? So I need to isolate W. It's connected to L by multiplication. So I would need to divide both sides by L. And I did this one out this way. So you see I divided both sides by L. What that does is even though we don't know what L is, anything divided by itself gives me a value of 1. And I get 1 times W, which is what I'm looking for. W is 1 times W. So now if I have area Let's say we had the area was 12 and the length was 6. I would simply do 12 divided by 6 equals W. I don't have to rearrange the equation to get that 2. So that is how we would use that. So here's a second example. This is the example of perimeter. If I have a rectangle, it would be the perimeter of a rectangle, and I have a length and a width. Those are called the dimensions of the rectangle. How do I find out, for instance, how much fence I need to go around this rectangle? So I would need a length of L for the bottom, W for this side. There's another L up here, and there's a W here. So if you see, I have an L plus an L, and a W plus a W. That's where I get the 2L plus 2W. Now, I want to solve that. Say I know the perimeter and I know the width, but I need to find how long I can make my whatever it is. I have I have this much fence and I know how much width I have to work with. I want to figure out how, how long I, of a yard I can enclose, for instance. So let me erase that. There we go. So I want to solve for L. The L is connected to things on its side of the equation. We'll look at the side of the equation the L is on. If I gave you a number for L, you would multiply it by 2, or times 2, which the opposite of times is divide, and obviously we'll multiply is divide, and then you would add the value of 2W. We want to go opposite operation in the opposite order. So the last thing I did was add 2w, so I want to subtract 2w from both sides. And that leaves me with p minus 2w equals 2l. Now I want to divide both sides by 2 because I want l by itself. 
divided by 2. Both sides means everything on both sides, each term. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. There's only one term on the right, so I'm all set there. But this has to, p has to divide by 2 and minus 2w has to divide by 2. Now you cannot cross off this 2 and this 2. Because if you do, you're not going to be dividing the p by 2. The only thing you can do is rearrange by making this two individual fractions on the left. And then you can do that. And you get p over 2 minus w. I would prefer you leave it in this form. And do not cancel those twos. That's a common error that you need to outgrow. Just I want you to make interesting errors, not common errors. So stop doing that. Now here's the equation of a line. We run into these all over the place in mathematics in this course and forever. So often, you know, we have x and we need to find y. But what if we have y and we want to find what x is? We would rearrange by solving for x. So the x is multiplied by 3 and then has 2 added to it. I'm going to do exactly the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2, because the last thing I did was add 2. So I subtract 2 from both sides. I get y minus 2 equals 3x, because these two will now add to 0. If I add 2 and subtract 2, I get 0. So now I have to divide both sides, all of the side, by 3. So I get y minus 2 over 3 equals x, or you could write that as two fractions on the left and get that. Either one of those are fine. Usually safer to leave it just like that because that's just as easy to calculate as the one on the right, if not a little easier, if I gave you a value for y and you needed to calculate x. Okay, let's look at the next example, which is also a line. This is a line, but some of you are going, uh-oh, there's the fraction problem. Yes, this is a fraction problem. What I need to show you is that when you do x divided by 2, it's the same as 1 half times x minus 5. So later when we do lines, Knowing the number that multiplies the x is important to find the slope. If you look at this version, you say, well, there's nothing multiplying, it's divided. But dividing by 2 is always the same as multiplying by a half. So if this form confuses you, you can write it like this. But for now, I'm just going to stick with what we have there, because for solving equations, it's not that confusing. So what's done to the x? Well. We say x over 2, we really do ourselves a disservice. So what we need to recognize is that x is divided by 2 and then has a 5 subtracted from it. So to do the opposite, I will add 5. I'm doing the opposite operation in the opposite order. y plus 5 equals x divided by 2. Now I can either look back here and see that I took care of this and now I have to do the opposite of this one here which I just erased I'm sorry I don't know why that happened so I had this and I want to do the divide by 2 and I want to undo that so I multiply both sides by 2 I could either look back at my list or I could look at my new equation here and say oh x is divided by 2 2 over 2 gives me a 1 be careful, you either have to put this in parentheses or you would have to do 2 times y plus 2 times 5 on the left side because if you didn't multiply the 5, you didn't multiply the whole side of the equation. So you get that equals x or more simply 2y plus 10 equals x. So now if I said y was 3, you could calculate x pretty quickly. Up here, if I said y was 3, you would have to write a 3 in here, and then you would have to do all of this to get your answer. If you had to do that more than once, it's more efficient to find this first and then 
calculate for all the different values of y you have. Computer coders do this all the time. You have to rearrange formulas for the variable you're looking for in, because you will have all but the x in this case and y would already be known. So you have to solve for the unknown. So here is a classic geometry formula. This is the circumference of a circle. I don't know why I said A. This should be C. C equals 2 pi R. So I want to solve this for R. This is the circumference, just to keep you from being confused. It sh area would be pi R squared. So now, I multiply the r by pi and I multiply it by 2. That's the same as multiplying by 2 pi because multiplication is associative and commutative. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So I get c over 2 pi equals r. You have to be really careful in your calculator. If I tell you c equals 30 and want to get r, if you do 30 divided by 2 times sorry, pi in your calculator, you will get 15 pi, which is not the answer. You have to group the parentheses because order of operations works from left to right doing either multiplication or division. It doesn't do multiplication first. PEMDAS is a lie. Um, you, you work left to right doing either multiplication or division once you've taken care of parentheses and exponents. There were no parentheses and exponents, but this symbol right here is an understood grouping symbol. It's always safest to put your numerators in parentheses and your denominators in parentheses when you're using your calculator. So this one uses the formula for the area of a triangle. Now you have the area, that should be a big A, just don't be confused by that, and you have the height and you want the base. If you only had to do this once, admittedly it's just as easy to do 12 equals 1 half B times 10. But what if you had to do it a bunch of times? So I want to get B by itself. So what's done to B on the right side of the equation? It's multiplied by one-half and it's multiplied by h. So I have to divide by both of those or I could recognize that instead to undo multiplication by half I multiply by two. But let's let's stick with the process we've been using. So I get a divided by a half equals bh. Well, dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2, so that gives me 2a equals bh. And then I need to divide both sides by h to get b alone, and I get b equals 2a divided by h. If you had left it as a divided by a half divided by h, that would be correct, but not nice. So this is really how that one should end up. You should take care of the division by the fraction and make it simplified because it is easy to do. When you divide by a fraction, you flip the bottom and multiply. So when I flip the bottom, which is a half, I get 2 over 1, which is just 2. So I get 2. That's where this 2a comes from. So here are some for you to try. They use some very similar they use some of the same formulas, just solving for different things. Um, try these and stop the video and then come back and look at the answers. So I'll see you in a minute. So here are our answers. Be aware of this one. If you had just done this, you would have got a wrong answer. So don't do that. You can't do that. I hate to even write it to make you see it. Um, this one you could have approached in a couple of ways. When you're multiplying both sides by 4, you either have to put the side in parentheses or multiply the y and then multiply by the 3, and that's where these come from. 
If you have any questions on these, you should email me. You should go to the tutoring lab and get help with these. Write them down. They're in your guided notes. Or um, bring, bring them to the, if we have a class meeting at all, you should bring it to the class meeting or ask a, a classmate. But do not just sit there and go, oh, well, I got that one wrong. Please follow up on these you try it questions. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.